So, do you know what is one of the keys that this God of the game has? Game feel, okay? So, everything feels amazing. Walking, jumping, uh, collecting coins, dodging the vehicles, the vehicles themselves, the environment, everything uh, works and looks good. So, in this video, I want to show you some ways in which this game implements game feel or game juice, okay? Just to make your games feel way better. First of all, what you have to take into account are the different interactions that your game has. So in this one, okay, the player walks, there is, um, there are coins that you collect. Uh, so, first of all, make a list of all the interactions that you could somehow make feel better. Uh, once you have that list, start making them feel better. How exactly? That is what we're going to be doing. So, first of all, I'm going to open up the coin scene, and I'm going to show you how this was done. So, first of all, uh, there is an animated sprite with an idle animation, just that. So, this does add to the game feel rather than being... Uh, a static coin there so this is a uh, one way of adding game field simple animations uh these are sprites animations then we have animations themselves so this is the collect coin animation this does like uh, some stuff pretty simple first of all it disables the collision shape um and then at the very end it also queues freeze so that the coin gets deleted and then in the animated sprite itself, what it does is that uh, there's two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end, and as you can see, the position is just modified, so it's moved up, and at the f at the same time that this is being moved up, it's also a uh, fade out by using the modulate property, and it's also been uh, scaled a little, so as you can see, it goes from 4.5 to 6, okay, so this is one way. Another way would be to scale it down, so rather than from going from 4.5 to 6, 0. Okay, so it's gonna do something like this, or maybe not to zero, but to two. Okay, so there is another effect that you can poten potentially do. Now, uh, just as a side note, how to do these things of, for example, a calling Q3 here and collision shape disabled here, you do add a track. And in this case, if you want to modify the collision, it's gonna be a property track. So you select the collision shape and you select here whatever you want to modify, for example, no, one-way collision, and you right-click, insert key, position it, and set the value, okay? As simple as that. Then for calling a function, you do add track, call method, in this case, coin, for example, once again, here another key, and for example, you do Q3, okay? And there it is, okay? Very simple. So one way is animations in the sprite or in the in the mesh itself, maybe in 3D, no, but I believe in the mesh itself, mm, you wouldn't do it, right? In 3D, yes, it wouldn't look good, but anyway, I believe you understand where this is going. Another way is direct animations, okay? Now, um, moving on to the player. The player, once again, jumps, moves right and left, uh, and all that. So for that, once again, we are applying animated sprites, okay? So we have an idle, a walk, okay? And even these animations are pretty simple, like... If they were more complex, it would be even better. But well, this is just one example. Um, and then the other thing that it has is the trail. That it, it isn't here in the hierarchy. Uh, it's actually over here, trail. Okay, so this is actually a line to the node. Okay, which has some uh, style settings, pretty simple, and just a script that basically adds points at the player uh, position. Okay, as simple as that. So for interactions, for movements, such as for players or even enemies, things flying around or activities, uh, using line to denote or basically trails are also an amazing choice. Then moving on to the vehicles, they also feel pretty good. The vehicles, what they have is a particle. Okay, once again, this is just a matter of getting here to modify these values and it's just some kind of engine particle simulating uh, this. Now, another thing that you could add to the vehicles, they move completely linearly. So you could add some animation that kind of moves them up and down a little, just that so they are not that linear. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't look that bad, okay? Um, so that is it. And also something uh, very important, whenever you are creating a fun um, an animation, um, such as this one, a pickup animation, uh, always apply these changes of the position, modulate, scale in the sprite or animated sprite itself, not in the root node. Uh, because if you move the, if you do it in the root node, then you will also move the collision, the animation, all that. And in some specific cases, that can lead to some errors. So 
minimize as much as possible using the root node just use it for for example q in its free okay or something like that but don't do it for animating in reality what you want to animate which is the sprite not the root node you don't want to animate the area itself what you want to animate is the area um now uh, there are a lot of particles in the internet you can even ask ai on how to add the game juice these were just examples i want to show you some of them for example a hit flash for when you receive or deal some damage time freeze in some specific frames of the game camera shakes when uh, also getting uh, getting damage particles when also collecting something when a bullet hits an enemy a player an object and in reality i want to show you another example this is made in unity okay but the same thing can apply in godot um so this is a game that has way more juice oh i already here <laughs> sorry i have here a version that is not the correct one okay here it is so um Mm -hmm. So this has way more game juice. Okay, let me actually maximize this. So for example, take a look at uh, how when I aim, it follows the mouse, not completely snapping to the mouse, but it has some uh, offset in between. Okay, so this is a, a linear interpolation. This is made via code. Okay, then also take a look at the enemies when they flip, they have also an animation for when they flip. Okay, it's not that they just flip. Uh, when I hit them, we have the flash, we have some particles. We have trails. We have some glowing effects. Okay, so all those things do add up to the the final game feel of the game. Okay. Uh, also here, take a look at the at this um, at the aim. Okay, it also follows me uh, linearly. Okay, uh, sorry, not linearly, but there is some some kind of of effect when when this potion hits an object, an, an obstacle. As you can see, it is it also has an animation. It has particles. Uh, it has a lot of things going on. So that's the key thing. Thinking of the, the different interaction, the interactions that the, that the game has um, and adding effects. Once again, we have mentioned mostly all of them. Okay, We have mentioned particles, trails, um, animations themselves. Okay, uh, So that's the key thing that nothing feels dead. Let's say everything has to feel uh, alive and, and that there is responsiveness. To, to the player actions that's the main key thing to add uh, to to these games now in the description of this video i'm going to be finding all these links okay which are gonna uh, show you my uh, courses this is the unity course in which i show you how to create the rpg game uh, we have seen okay all these things have amazing discounts uh, automatically applied so this is one course this is another go course okay uh, in which we create the first game i showed you at the very beginning take a look at the ratings the, the number of students these courses have so they are validated and let's take a look at the amazing price that they are off once again uh, also consider the fact that uh, they, these discounts are for limited time and also these two other Godot courses so just check off them check the curriculum check the course length everything that is included and buy the one or the ones you like the most see you inside and bye bye